It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. I'm joined by Chris, Real Ale 140, and we've got a, something a little bit different for you here today. We've got two regular beers that you can get. Very ordinary beers. Yeah, in most pubs around the country, um, social clubs, pubs, whatever. Um, for the benefit of our American chums, um, I don't know what your normal beers are. These are, these are just standard bitters. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, Session, session bitter yeah is something you can find in in any kind of pub mm -hmm. it's not craft beer but today it's not it is about the beer but the beer isn't the most kind of no. centric thing about this video this video really is a, if you think about where well, you know when you have food with beer what's the most common thing and pub culture in the UK dictates uh, actually you're going to try and Know, get yourself some bar snacks. Why bar snacks, Chris? Well, you know, you're sat in a pub, you're having a beer, it's a very ordinary beer, you know, you're not just enjoying it. You're there for the, you're there for the company. Mm. You're there for the, the, the crack if you're Irish, uh, for a bit of a laugh if you're English, you know, take the piss out of each other, you know, have a bit of fun. But the beer isn't the star of the show. So, you're having three or four pints in an evening. Getting a bit hungry. You're getting a bit hungry, you haven't had tea, you go, oh, God, what am I going to do? Do I go home? and have a meal mm. or do I stay and have one or two more beers and have a bar snack mm. and this is the core essence of this video we have top five bar snacks that are, are available from the world over if you like we're going to try and establish probably a top three for this very scenario yeah. yeah we'll just talk you through some of the stuff that you're going to see in the pub um, so we've got crisps cold mother we've got cheese and onion Ready salted. What's your preference on these? Who doesn't love a packet of crisps in a pub? Let's get these, let's get some of these open. Now the traditional way to open crisps, that way. Yes, yes, that's right, yeah. But we, we, we don't want to see that, we don't want to see no. that in the pub. No. In the pub, you will do the standard open, that way. Then you will have to do a rip down the side and make it full and open thing because this bar snack isn't just for you the minute you open a bar snack look at crisps, that you've got a meal for everyone it's at that an table instant meal an instant meal so ready salted Chris go on Chris let's get one down my neck with a regular bitter mm. let's get in so what's it doing for you yep for me, I know I'm instantly kind of trying to food match it, but it's not about that. It's about them saturated fats, isn't it, Chris? Mm. Yeah. This is going to provide you with the sustenance to carry on. And the beauty of the salted crisp, the plain salted crisp, mm. is that it's not taxing you. It's not, you know, and if you've got a beer that's all right and the flavour's fine, that's okay. You know, very often, maybe that's all they've got. For me, Really, the king of the show for crisps is your cheese and onion. So, see, put that on the side and out on the plate. And the, while we're talking, it's a very social thing. Mm. These crisps are being ripped open. You've got three or four people around the table. Yeah. It's and always they're, they're a in seconds. Yeah. Yeah. But that's fine because you'll there pick you up go. two or three bags. And as you go up to the bar, you'll say, Does anybody want some crisps? Exactly. Yeah. Classic like cheese and onion. Yeah, can't fault it. What does the cheese and onion bring though? The it's flavour. Mm. Flavour which I know I know it's an art, it, it, it's a flavour, it's not a real cheese, but people kind of pair cheese and beer all the time. Yeah. Actually it washes down great. It's a great it's almost a marriage. Mm. And you know, if you're in a pub that's got slightly kind of iffy taps and you want to get some of that yeah, beer taste out of your mouth. Your cheese and onion crisp is going to be powerful enough to do that. But what about the nuts? Well, this is beer kind of, and nuts. So we've got some little selection of nuts here. These are kind of your fancier kind. Cheese and pickle, Branston nuts. So the crisps would a would a marriage. Is this is this your kind of? In some countries, you can have up to five wives. Mm. Is this your prime wife? For the, the nuts. The nuts. Let's and and this nuts. is your harem with the nuts. And um, we've also got some salted nuts, plain salted. 
and dry roasted. My my personal favourite, if I'm honest. Dry roasted. Here we go. And the best bit for me about the nuts is that actually, you know, so nice dry powder on it. This is your dry roasted nut. Let's go with that. I've got these open. Yeah. Dry roasted mm. peanuts. Oh. Now, these are all about the flavour. And actually, what they do, I think, is almost like dry out your mouth and ready your palate for another go at the beer. Mm. And again, the sole purpose for the landlord, for me to stock this type of food, is to keep you in the pub longer. Yeah, absolutely. And not just that, that sounds a little bit sinister, doesn't it? It's, it's about keeping your punters happy and, and what this is this type of food has been born out over thousands of years for, for however long the pub has been mm. they would have experimented with different foods over the years mm. and and this is where we've ended up mm. in 2014 or from the 1970s onwards nuts crisps and they go really really well with beer it really kind of slides together doesn't it in, yeah. in terms of flavor just cleaning your palate and really prepping you through and giving you actually some of this stuff and you know if you've ever read the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy just before he travels through time and lands uh, into travels through space and lands on the Vogue on ship Arthur Dent has a packet of nuts and three pints of beer because he's going to need to replace the chemicals that he's lost wow that's what this is doing now these these are a relatively new kind of thing on the scene they're nuts and crackers in the same bag oh wow mm. Cheese and pickle crit, uh, nuts. Blimey. Mmm. Mmm. That's weird. Yeah. That is weird. You know, I, I do love things that are pickled. Pickled onions, particularly. We'll come back to that in a minute. But it's different. What's this doing for you? Is this right? Is it? Mmm. I think, I think you're stepping outside of the classic yeah. kind of yeah. field of pub snacks yeah. for this. This is more of a, I don't know, if you've got your friends around for nibbles, that kind of... Yeah, that kind of, maybe, maybe a glass of Pims. Mm. And, 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 yeah, uh, for me... That's no good. No, that, cheese and pickle nuts, no, straight away. Forget about that. Forget about that. So, plain nuts, just, just salted nuts. A couple of salted nuts, again, they're all highly kind of saturated, fatty yeah. kind of oily foods mm. to number one you could be going off the edge if you've had four pints and you're sitting in, in a chair and you're thinking mm. spot into yourself <laughs> yeah exactly um, these can bring you back honestly a, a handful of nuts the dead almost and again it goes so well yeah really crispy these are these salted nuts mm. they don't have the powder covering mm. Of the dry roasted nut, so you kind of we just getting that feeling. It's just the, the taste of the salt and, and the taste of the nut, two separate mm. things. Like that. And then, but there's no kind of overriding flavour other other than those two things that are quite separate. You don't get the MSG hit either. So no, not, not quite as Moorish maybe. One thing I do love about nuts is the dust at the bottom of the bag. Yes, I could chuck that handful of salty dust into my mouth ten times a day, and that would be great. But that oiliness, that kind of creaminess from the nut if you if you do that and then have a mouthful of the beer the beer takes that all away mm. it's like again it's working it's working for if you have the nuts it's helping you and then the beer washes that away it's just a, com a completely great marriage mm. there's some newer foods oh, these are, first of all these are classics these are absolute classics yeah. yeah yeah so if you're ever visiting the UK you're not sure what to get from behind the bar you must, you absolutely must check out these scampi fries and bacon frazzles how many times have you been in the pub and you thought to yourself I want a bag of scampi fries it's a classic pub food so these are the bacon fries here's the bacon ones so these are kind of thinner and more concentrated than oh they're not actually bacon mm. they're more of a baked kind of Alright, this, mm. after this, get a mouthful of that beer with it. So you've got that kind of fatty layer in your mouth at the moment. Mm. 
a mouthful of beer will just take that all away. They'll clean it away. And they're a maize snack. These so well, they're kind of like grown up monster munchies. Yeah. Like that. But they're yeah. crispy at the same time. So you've got some substantial, you almost feel like you're eating a meat, you know. That is a great. It's it's difficult because we've spoken about pub food. We've we've spoken about the kind of benefits of it and uh, to keep you in the pub and to clean your palate and to, and to kind of save you from that monstrous hangover. Yeah. It's but these I really want to talk a lot an awful lot more about these. But get them up to the camera. Yeah. 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 Let's get them up to the camera. They're, 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 like, they're, like, they're like having crispy bacon. No. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. The way Americans like to serve bacon. Yeah, you know, like solid, straight pieces. You know, weird. I like a bit of back bacon myself, but this is good too. Really, really good pub food. What do you What do you do when you want to step up from these? Yeah. The scampi fries. Let me get these open. Now these if these provide the step up on the basis. That they have a, a hatful more flavour. It's a it's a flavour of a salt and you know, just all through your mouth, everything. They really, really zing. So get some of them in your crisps. You've got like a uh, what, what is it? It's like a <laughs> crispy <laughs> biscuity kind of it's a big fatty saturated oh. meal in a bag. So scampi and lemon. And a bloody taste like it as well. And a medium. Maybe the pub stop oh. serving proper food. Or a bit, you really fancy it. Scampi and chips, or it's scampi and a basket, you know. That, for me, is perfect. It's something we haven't covered. Mm. Before the days of Weatherspoons in the UK. Now, let me talk quickly about Weatherspoons. You can go into a Weatherspoons at 9 o'clock in the morning. You can order a breakfast. You can order food then throughout the day from 9 in the morning up until 9 o'clock at night. When me and Chris were younger, that wasn't the case. No. The pub used to serve for an hour or two at the lunchtime, maybe even close, mm. and then open back up, serve for an hour or two in the evening of food, main meals, chicken and chips, yeah. your steak and chips, and then close again. Some of the pubs used to stay open though, but they never used to serve food throughout their kind of opening period. No. This is the only thing you could get. This would be the only thing you can get. And that's a very good, that's a valid point you come across there. That, that this really kind of flavoursome, cheap, easy, open the bag, enjoy with your beer food, mm. keeps you in the pub. Yeah. And it can keep you, you through until you're ready to roll out and get a kebab. We haven't got kebabs today. We're in snack territory, and that enters the meal, meal and thing. Absolutely. So, the daddy, I think, in some ways, yeah, of food is the pork scratcher. And we've got two kinds here today. Um, we haven't tried either of these yet. No. The pork scratcher, you know, this is pork rind in the oven, plenty of salt, plenty of spice. <coughs> Would you say this would be in terms of history. Show that up to the camera. Mm, yeah. So th this is, there's two kinds isn't there? There's the kind of more puffed kind. I don't know what those are, whether they're more, they're more rindy kind. Now, now for me Chris, this looks like it could have been served in the pub 300 years ago. Absolutely, yeah. It's, would you say the pork scratching is the original pub bar snack? It's got to be. It's got to be one of the best uses of a pub bar snack. I mean, look at look at the structure of that. That is straight off a pig. That is like skimmed off, bunged in the oven. Mm. What else are you going to do with it? I mean, we've all served a pork joint with a little, little fatty kind of mass yeah. on the edge. You whip it off. You serve the rest of it. It's well and good. But what, what do you make of it after that? I'm going to go. I'm going to put my neck on the line and say this is the original pub bar snack. Or not? Hmm? Oh yeah. And again, right, right. it's a meal in a bag. Are you fatty? Well, these are different. These are the these are the puffy kind. Oh, which ones are my? Look at the interior of this this one. That. This is the puffier kind. 
where they've kind of mm. puffed out the fat. I don't know, probably using a bit of process. Look at the interior of that, solid. Really crunchy, oily, and again, it's been designed to feed you in a bag. Mm. It's almost like rationing. It's almost like when we were in the, 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 the First and the Second World War, but they, they kind of brought that education of feeding thousands of people in the field for months on end. They almost brought it to the pub, that kind of science. Mm. That is brilliant. These, these are the superior of this one, I think. Yeah. Mm. The solid kind. Two kinds of pork ration, the puff kind that are kind of more like a crisp. So these are just, they're pure meat, pure fat. And what do you want when you're in a pub? You've had a skinful. You want that. You want that. It, it's fatty, it, it's salty, yeah, goodness. Yeah. Big salty. It's a, it's very satisfying. It's a satisfying food. And with a beer, it was a If you get some pubs, you get a big bag of them this size. And that that is enough to sustain two gentlemen for four, five hours maybe. Have a few games of pool. Have three or four pints, big bag of those Virginia, washed down, fantastic. Now I mentioned the oldest, possibly the oldest bar snack in the UK. Now we are moving on to something which is probably the newest. I don't know. This is this is a traditional. What you say? My dad, my dad's a big fan of these. I've never tried this particular bar snack. I think. No, me. This is this is getting towards the meal end of. Bar snacks, and yeah. you'll see them in a jar on the end of a bar. I don't know if you can guess what it is yet. This will keep you in a pub all day. Mm. Let me get a fork. Yeah. I'm just going to use my fingers. I'm just... Yeah, go on. go on. All right. So, this is... The pickled egg. So all you have here is eggs pickled in vinegar. Mm. I've not Very tried one. Food. And yeah, storing food and vinegar is great. Right? I love the beetroot, I love onions, pickles, and mm. all manner of things. Could never bring myself to quite do this, but you no. know what? I've had a couple of pints so far today. I think I'm going to do it. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh. that is amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Mm. So many flavours. I've got vinegar dripping down my hand. Still. And again, mm. when you leave the pub, it, if, you, if you're looking at a design process, when you leave the pub at 11 o'clock at night, generally what you're looking to do mm. you want is to go to taste, the fish shop. You want to taste something, don't you? You go into the chip shop, you get a bag of chips with loads of vinegar on, mm. and you're walking home. You're leaving the pub. But to stay in the pub, you haven't got to leave the pub anymore. No. You've got a pickled egg with loads of vinegar all over it. Mm. That's great. That is brilliant. And that is absolutely with phenomenal. Yeah. This is the first time I've eaten a, a pickled egg. We've gone 35 years without eating these. 35 years without a pickled egg. I expect if you're up north, if you've got a, we've got a few northern viewers, and you're thinking, you've not had a pickled egg? I'll be, I, I can tell you, we'll take them up the garden where the ladies are after this review or after this video. They'll disappear. And they'll disappear. These are phenomenal. Mm. Wow. What's it like with a mouthful of beer? It, it somehow, the vinegar stays for an awful long time, with the, even with the beer washing it around. And you don't need, mm. it's alright, the vinegar is permeated, yeah. Oh. Mm. Do you get that? Zing. <laughs> Phenomenal. Mm. Eye crunchingly good stuff. So, what would you go for, Chris? If I had to go for a top three bar snacks. Yeah. Uh, go on. Uh, I think my go to, my go to is your cheese and onion crisp. I think that's probably in third place for me. In second place, with an honourable mention to drive some nuts because they're an absolute go-to as well. Yeah. But I love the dust and you have to get away all the way through the bag to get the dust. So in second place, I'm going to put the pork scratcher. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah. It's mealy enough to keep you in the pub for an extra couple of hours. That. And at the top of the game, <coughs> pardon me, pickled eggs. Pickled eggs. The the new, the new batch. Well, for me, mm. I've not tried it. The mm. new batch. Mm. For me, I'm gonna go with pork scratchings in third place. Mm. Followed by the classic scampi fries. I think they're phenomenal. I love them. And then in first place, the winner of the Bar Snack Award between Real Ada 140 and Real Ale Craft Beer. We're going to go with the pickled eggs. That's the number one bar snack mm. in the UK. But you've seen the video. You've seen what we've eaten. We've not reviewed or we've not tasted beef jerky. Beef jerky is a big, big thing. It's difficult for us in Wales to get proper beef jerky, jerky, you know, the yeah. chilli stuff and, the, and the, with all the flavours. Mm. You can get stuff in the supermarket, but it's not that good. So we left that out for the time being. So you guys watching, put your top five beer snacks on what would win in your top three beer snacks in the comments box. And if you're in the States, tell us what you do that's different. Yeah, tell us wh wherever you are in the world, let us know what you have as a bar snack in your pub. But thank you for Chris Lady, Real Anyone 140 for joining me. Put your comments in the comments box. Please subscribe to our daily beer reviews. And cheers.